North of the Black Hills, South Dakota, the landscape morphs into a sprawling prairie where pronghorn antelope and cattle outnumber humans by a wide margin. If you dare venture along the desolate stretch of Highway 85 from Belfouche to Buffalo, you'll find more companionship in the wind than in people. 46 miles north of Belfouche, you hit a tiny oasis consisting of a gas station, a few camper parking spots, and a faded roadside marker. This unassuming spot marks the Crow Buttes, named after an 1822 massacre between the Lakota Sioux and the Crow. The details are murky, shrouded in the mists of time. But one thing is clear. It was another episode in the bloody history of intertribal warfare. These tribes were no strangers to conflict long before the Europeans showed up. Like all humans, they fought over resources, territory, and old grudges. A few days before, at the Crazy Horse Memorial, I reminded visitors on the bus trip to the base of the mountain that the Black Hills were once Crow and Kiowa land. I was viewed with suspicion and curiosity. But here's the brutal rundown. Around 1775-76, a Lakota war party, most likely Oglala, ventured west from the Missouri River, finding the Black Hills occupied by the Cheyenne, Kiowa, and Crow. By 1794, after relentless warfare, the Lakota had seized control of the Black Hills, letting the Cheyenne stick around as allies while booting out the other tribes. Back to our massacre site. The roadside marker tells of the Lakota Sioux decimating a crow camp, driving the crow warriors to the top of the buttes. With nothing to fear, the Sioux simply waited them out until dehydration did their dirty work. Adding a grim twist, the marker notes that the Lakota contracted a fever from the crow, leading to many deaths and burials in a nearby canyon, the so-called Canyon of Skulls. One thing I stumbled into is that this location is depicted on the 1874 Black Hills Expedition map, created by Custer's chief engineer, Captain William Ludlow. The Library of Congress website has a high-resolution version of the map. So, superimposing the 1874 map with a satellite photo confirms the location, known then as the place where the crows were killed, is modern-day Crow Buttes. One final thing. This incident should not be confused with a similar event in 1849 at Crow Butte, Nebraska. A Crow party of probably no more than three dozen warriors rode down from Montana to steal horses. They ran into a larger group of Lakota, and the Crow retreated to the top of a nameless butte. The Sioux laid siege, but the Crow put on a brave show, singing, dancing, and burning fires. On the fourth day, the fires went out, and silence fell. When the Lakota Sioux climbed the butte, they found it empty. The story goes that the crow had fashioned rawhide ropes and rappelled down the sheer south face, escaping under the cover of night. So if you're going to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, for the air show this summer, end of July, I'll see you there. If not, then stay tuned for work on the Wounded Knee Massacre, and then, hopefully, by the end of summer, maybe September, October, I'm going to try and go to Colorado and hit the Sand Creek Massacre. So, um, anyway, I'll see you there. <laughs>